Outside of some engineering work and odd jobs as a golf course groundskeeper and volleyball referee, I've worked in open source my entire career. To say that I'm worried about the impact recent events have had on the open source ecosystem would be an understatement. In the past couple months, Red Hat effectively killed CentOS Linux and Elastic effectively killed Elasticsearch. And in the comments, people will refute those two statements, but the statements are more complicated than you might think. No, killing a project doesn't mean that the project will go away completely and its user base will abandon it, but it does mean two very large open source companies have shown the chinks in the armor of the practice of monetizing free and open source software. For many years, everyone in the industry pointed at Red Hat as the shining example of how to build a company around open source. And for a number of years, it looked like the open source Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana logging ecosystem was on a tear becoming a standard in the open source cloud stack. But Red Hat was bought out by IBM in 2019, and after taking over the community sent to us project, they basically neutered it by ending the decade-long support cycle that it was previously known and loved for. And Elastic switched from the Apache 2 license to a non-free software license for Elasticsearch just a couple weeks ago. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about Red Hat and sent to us though. We'll get back to Elasticsearch. When Red Hat took over the CentOS project, there was a mixed but mostly positive reaction. The CentOS maintainers were sometimes having a hard time keeping up with upstream changes in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and major releases like version 7 and 8 were challenging due to the required architecture changes. So Red Hat's willingness to come in and make sure CentOS didn't fail was generally positive for a time. Last month, though, Red Hat dropped a bombshell. CentOS users who had started adopting CentOS 8 and expected support for stable releases until the end of the 2020s would get just one year of support. They would need to switch to CentOS Stream, a kind of a stable beta version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux that's more stable than Fedora, sure, but it's less stable than Enterprise Linux. Or they'd have to give up CentOS entirely. This angered a lot of people, admittedly, most of whom have been building on the free version of CentOS without contributing much, if anything, back to the project for years. But it also angered a lot of people like me, who don't really use CentOS too much, except to test completely free and open source software on multiple distributions, and use CentOS as a proxy for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat extended a small olive branch in the form of less restrictive licensing for developers like me, but it's still not clear how much work I'll have to do if I want to do things like CI testing and containers without having to manage subscriptions and access keys. Those kind of things may lead to me killing all support for Red Hat flavors of Linux in many of my own open source projects. So I guess Debian and Ubuntu for the win? Anyways, there is more nuance to the entire debacle, but the main thing this points to is the fact that while increasing revenue via licensing might not be the only motive Red Hat had in this move, it was certainly a major factor. And the downfall of Scientific Linux and CentOS makes those who've built their careers or companies around Red Hat compatibility without paying the subscription fees pretty nervous. They're now waiting to see if the up and coming Rocky Linux, which aims to be a perfect replacement for CentOS, is going to be released soon with the same stability they grew to expect from CentOS. Now, getting back to Elastic and Elasticsearch, there's again so much happening that I can't possibly cover it all in this video, but the basic story goes like this. Elasticsearch was created under the open source Apache 2 license. It's grown to be an essential open source cloud infrastructure component, and I've seen it used everywhere. Seeing its popularity and the complexity of deploying and maintaining Elasticsearch clusters, Amazon Web Services, or AWS, decided to package up its own hosted Elasticsearch offering. Well, Elastic, the venture capital-backed company at the helm of the open source project, didn't like that because the way they were monetizing their development and showing growth to their investors was by charging for their own hosted Elasticsearch offering. So AWS was directly competing with Elastic, but not taking the same responsibility for the open source project or investing in it as heavily as Elastic was. This creates a problem inherent to many popular open source packages. When a cloud computing behemoth like Google, AWS, or Microsoft decides to wrap up your free software in a hosted offering and profits from it, how do you deal with that? Well, Elastic dealt with it by switching to a new license, which many in the FOSS, or free and open source software community, have decried as not being truly open source. The SSPL, or server-side public license, is touted as a GPL version 3 derivative license. 
It's similar, but it has a major restriction stating you can't build a hosted service for someone and profit off of it. The Fedora community publicly stated that to consider the SSPL to be free or open source causes a shadow to be cast across all other licenses in the FOSS ecosystem. And the open source initiative dubbed the license FOPEN in their article, the SSPL is not an open source license. They said it's deception, plain and simple, to claim that the software has all the benefits and promises of open source when it does not. So what did Amazon do in response? They forked Elasticsearch, something well within their rights since they're forking the last truly open source version 7.10. It'll be interesting to see how the communities around these two now separate projects diverge. So like I said, this video can't do justice to the nuance of the entire situation, and it's not as simple as IBM is bad, or leeches are bad for open source, or giant AWS is forking little Elastic's project. There's a lot more to it, and I encourage you to read more about the news. But I know for me, it brings up some challenging questions. First of all, how can we make sure developers who build open source software are compensated for their work in a just way? And how can we hold both giant corporations and billion dollar venture backed startups accountable for writing the coattails of free and open source software without giving back proportionately? Second, how can I mitigate against software and services that I use and love changing licenses and causing headaches for me? One way is to become more restrictive in my licensing, choosing only copyleft licenses that were originally created to offer more protections to individuals than corporations. Third, if I want to earn a living or build a company around open source, what are my options? We all used to point to Red Hat as the paragon of open source, but it seems like that company, for all the great things that they've done and are still doing in open source communities, has begun traveling down the path of sales over source code. The more corporate friendly open source has become, the more power has been ceded to giant mega corporations, and who's to blame? Well, sadly, after some deep introspection, I have to admit that maybe I'm part of the problem. Anyways, these events are causing a lot of developers to second guess their dismissal of the open source licensing weirdos who always are yelling about the importance of choosing the right license. But maybe they're onto something. Maybe blindly adopting permissive open source licenses to invite more corporate ownership isn't the right answer. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. Dub the license FOPEN. 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 F-A-U-X, you know, Fox. Whatever, Guy Fox. Developers who build open source software are com. com are, mm, I shouldn't have made this such a long paragraph. Billion dollar venture back startup. Star it's harder to say than you'd think, I guess. Wish I had a billion dollar venture backed startup.